If you want a nice lightweight UI for stable diffusion that can do basic things like for example you want text to image, you want image to image, you want in painting, then you have got a new UI that is based on Streamlit, a very popular Python library to develop data applications using Python. So we have got a new UI called Diffusers. Remember the Z here? So Diffusers is a new Python package and also a project by Abhishek Thakur who also works for Hugging Face, the company that released Diffusers with S. So this UI can do few things. For example, it can do text to image, image to image, textual inversion. You can load any model from Hugging Face Model Hub embedding I should say embedding from Hugging Face Model Hub and then do textual inversion in painting and there are some other options that are coming soon. So for you to use this, you can use this either on your local machine if you have got a GPU but if you are like me, you do not have your personal GPU then you can use this on Google Collab as well. That's the good thing about this UI which you can use on Google Collab as well and it is also lightweight when you compare it with UIs like Automatic 11.11. So if you just simply want to do these tasks then I would recommend you to check this out. So first you need to go to this repository which I'll link it in the YouTube description then click open in Google Collab and then start running everything. So when you run this it's very simple all you have to do is first install the diffusers library before that make sure that you have got GPU enabled go to runtime click runtime click change runtime and then see if GPU is enabled. Once GPU is enabled, install the library diffusers. The next thing is you need to run diffusers in a particular port, in this case 10,000 and then you need a way to tunnel it. If you see Abhishek Thakur's collab notebook, this uses ngrok. Ngrok is a very popular service where you need to register and get an authentication token and you can enter the authentication token here and then it will tunnel and give you an external URL. But if you do not want to use ngrok, then I've got a different solution for you. This is local tunnel. You can just simply run this command. Diffusers run dash dash port, run it on 10,000 port number 10,000 and npx local tunnel which means you are tunneling this particular port that will give you the link which you can click and then run open the hug open the diffusers ui so once you go there and click that then you will be greeted with this kind of ui so this is the landing page of diffusers ui and once you go to individual services you can download respective models as you need so this is a very simple hugging very simple ui for stable diffusion and it is built on top of diffusers library that is um, you know that 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 helps you run stable diffusion so to quickly show you the features of this ui so you can click text to image i've already loaded the model so when you load the model it will take some time once you load the model then you can select the scheduler that you want whatever scheduler that you like to use so we can select different schedulers i'm going to select euler and then you can select the image size 512 by 512 or 768 by 768 guidance scale number of images that you want this is batch number of steps that you want and then finally the number of seed if you are not familiar with these options to quickly say a guidance scale will help your model like help your particular that instance to align the output image closer to your prompt for example if the guidance scale is more the model is going to try to make the image more like a blue elephant. Doesn't mean that always higher guidance scale is better. Doesn't mean the lesser guidance scale will always bad. So it's something that you need to play with. I've always found 7, -ish, 7 to 10 being a good value. Number of images, how many images you want. Number of steps again, like as you increase the number of steps, it will take more time to do the inference. But again, number of steps will help enhance the image, make it make it a better image. The next thing is you can select the seed value for reproducibility here the seed value that is set is 42 but you can click this to set any random seed if you want. So now let's go ahead and then give a prompt um, I'm going to use my favorite prompt close up studio lighting close up portrait of a young Chinese girl studio lighting I'm going to add some negative prompts negative prompts are prompts or characteristics that you do not want to see in the image. For example, ugly, nobody knows what is ugly here. Just ugly works fine. Deformed and um, dull, fat, maybe, yeah. So some, sometimes these images would look very awkward. So these are some, some of the prompts that you can give to see what you don't want to see in the image. 
and then you have got you click generate button if you want to see what happens you can go here and then see if it actually works you can see the number of iterations it how much time it takes and it takes about i think 11 seconds 11 or 12 seconds in this case yeah 11 or 12 seconds and then you can see that it has generated the image you have got the image as an output so these images are right now not saved anywhere but what you can also do is when you click this run when you do this run diffusers let me show you when you do the diffusers run you can also select the output path where you want this to run so i can show you in the repository so you can see these options so you can select an output path you can give an output path where you want these images to be automatically saved this way you don't have to save manually save every single image and it also supports m1 max so if you have got an m1 mac um, that is apple silicon mac mac with apple silicon chip then this also supports that that is another option that you can give while giving an option you can select the device right now we are using google collab notebook which has got cuda i'm not using cpu but this works on cpu cuda which is gpu and also on m1 mac which is a metal processor so then other options that you have got like you can now try with the different options here you can load different models you can go to hugging face model hub and then select any model there and then you can paste that model link here and that will load that particular model and then you can use you can also change the scheduler and then see sometimes changing the scheduler can have a huge impact in the way the output is generated so you can change the scheduler click generate and that is going to generate another image so this is basically what text to images now if you have got a text to image model you've generated you want to change the dimensions you can do but more importantly if you want some utilities for example you okay this is the image we have got i prefer this image better than that image so this is a dpm solver multi-step scheduler so now if after i've got this image if i want to let's say go do utilities in utilities we have certain options like you know you can get the image info for example you find any png image online and then you want to see what are the prompts that people have used what kind of things that they have used so they you can use it for example let's save this image here okay that image is gone let me give another option um young close up portrait of a young chinese girl um studio lighting let's say studio lighting and i'm going to say professional Nikon short something that thing ugly deformed cartoonish and then let's click generate so now this image that has got generated so you can upload that image in the utilities image info and that can give you the entire details about the image and that's quite helpful whenever you find some image like this I can save this image and say or I can click just download the image so that will download the image for me i can call it new image which is zip let's use zip so that has got probably all the images let me open the zip for you go to the utilities and i'm going to click image info and i'm going to get the new image you just load it and i'm going to paste it here so you can see here and that image is getting loaded and once that image is loaded you can see the entire detail you can see the prompt the prompt that has been used you can see the scheduler you can see the size you can see the seed value you can basically see all the information about this image this is quite helpful in uh, reproducing the same image that is shared online that's an important utility the other utilities that you can find here is a, you have got GF, gfp gan and you have got sd stable diffusion upscaler if you want to upscale the 512 by 512 image into something else another important thing for you to notice this UI also supports image to image. So you can upload an image and then give prompt and negative prompt and generate something. It also gives you in painting option. So you can upload an image. Like for example, I can upload this image here and we can, we can try to select, we can try to select. So you get a free drawing tool. So you can, you have different options to select what all you want to do. You want to like select rectangle circle. So I can select circle. And then I can say uh, here, I can select this and I can put, say I want a nose ring. I, I, I don't know if it is easier to put a nose ring, nose ring, beautiful diamond nose ring, um, cartoonish. And so this is in painting. So we've taken an image 
then we are trying to add something to the image and I click generate and then it's going to it's going to try to use this as a mask and then add a nose ring. I, I've never found a nose ring working out fine whenever I've tried in painting but let's see what is going to happen in this particular case. Okay, it, it didn't put any it didn't put any nose ring. So it's 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 it didn't do anything. So that's that's normal. But this is how you do in painting. Image to image is something that a lot of people have been asking me about and you have got image to image as well. So you can you can upload an image and then try to create another version of that image. So a lot of people try to do this. Uh, for example, if you want to create an image of a particular brand, you can use image to image and then do things around it. So overall, this UI is quite good and uh, the developer Abhishek Thakur is continuously developing it. You can go ahead to the GitHub repository and then raise an issue with the feature request that you want. And also you can see the roadmap about what are the things that, you are, that are coming. Like I said, this supports your local computer CPU um, or anywhere CPU, GPU, GPU on Google Colab, Mac, Apple Silicon M on Mac. So it supports all these all these platforms. So any platform that you have got, you can definitely use this. Another thing that I forgot to show you is textual inversion. So if you have got a textual inversion embedding on Hugging Face Model Hub, you can literally take the textual inversion embedding, which are like styles of an image, and then you can download the like load the base model and then you can start using textual inversion as well. So if you are interested in any particular section, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to dive deep into that particular section. But to quickly show you, all you have to do is go to this repository, click open collab and then add your ngrok token. You can run it or I will also link my Google collab notebook in the YouTube description. So all you have to do is open this Google collab run everything that will give you a URL and once you go to the URL it will say click and once you click it you will be greeted with this uh, interface. Every time you load the model it's going to take a bit of time for you to download the model because it has to actually download the model inside the Google Collab machine but otherwise this is a this is a very lightweight UI for stable diffusion that supports all major platforms. I hope this was helpful to you in learning about a new UI called diffusers with Z diffusers. And if you have any other question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in the next video.